Hello and welcome. For this one, I'm going to track down a set of Fusion Militia. I've been enjoying some Fusion Infernos myself. I think they're pretty handy. Fusion Flame Bursts could be good. I uh, don't have them set up yet, but I'm looking forward to also. I would love to run a set of Fusion Militia on my boost mug as my active hero. That way I could drop fusion healing orbs because they probably only need fortify and range to be really useful. A flat 50% rift armor, pretty handy. So I'm going to go in with fusion DSTs for this one, but uh, that's it. And I'm going to be at 6k power, 3k range and rate the rest of my defenses will be standard. I'll have wave 23 stars for each piece. Speaking of which, the helmet, it's going to come from either alchemical labs, magus quarters or tornado valley, a wave 25 clear. Must be a wave 25 clear for the helmet, but um, I've already covered Alk Labs and Magus Quarters on the channel, so I'll go to Tornado Valley since I haven't yet. Plus, I think since it has the highest loot modifier, it should have the best chance of a good helmet of the three maps. The chest is from the Promenade. I'll get that last, but I'll show you a faster version of the build I shared for the guard farming video. The gloves are from the Lava Mines and the boots are from the Ramparts. So I am going to go in with traps and auras here as well, but um, they'll be standard traps and auras. And I've got 6k power, 4100 range on the traps. 6k power 4700 on the range for the auras the traps and auras the range i think is more important it's more important to have more range than power you'll see why in the builds that i share and the uh, beamers nearly 7500 power and my walls i am going to be using walls for some of these builds those walls will be at 8300 let's swap to a giraffe we can bring that down a little bit, I don't need that much fortify, sure. 79, 60, that's better. I'll use a draft, easier to move around. All right, with that out of the way, let's head to Tornado Valley to get our helmet. Another tornado map. I really didn't spend any time here during 1.1. I kind of avoided it for a while, actually. I didn't get my check mark for a long time. But uh, let's start off with a wall. I'm gonna do a 3DU wall here, 3DU EV wall. I'll start it at the bottom step here with a bit of a gap against that round rock. And then I'm going to come up on this ledge. A 3DU wall is good. Now, I like to drop a, uh, a 6DU buff beam from here. This wall gets armor, and then this buff beam becomes pretty handy for doing a few things. So I'm going to sweep it out eh, about there, halfway between this little ridge and the stairs. And I'm going to swap in my uh, apprentice here first. I like aiming the DSTs before you drop R's and stuff because it gets to be a bit muddy to look at things and it's hard to see the uh the range and the uh the aimer on the tower so i'm gonna aim this one the right side of the aim i want to cover that spawn door that'll kill the nightmare enemies that come out right away and um it'll also cover this lane pretty much anything that may accumulate in this pocket will be covered by that dst one more going down here same deal here for this one aiming it the right side, covering that spawn door. And then I'm gonna have two more go down here. Now this one, I'm gonna have it on the other side, the left side of the aim, gonna cover the uh, dark portion of this path here. That's the idea. And I'm gonna have one more go down. This one could go down the same way, but I've got um, spiders that come in here. You'll have spiders dropping in right about here up on this ledge. And um, if you don't take care of them quick enough, they could web your tower stack. You could drop a reflect wall here, but I like using that DU elsewhere. So that DST will prioritize nightmare enemies and spiders are a nightmare enemy. They'll get taken out. If they drop in here and they're immune to electric, um, they live long enough to web you sometimes. So that DST will be handy for that. So we've got coverage across the whole map here on our DSTs. We've got a copter lane coming in. We'll have no problems with copters. These DSTs will have no problem taking these copters out another copter lane right there. They won't live long enough to be a nuisance. So I'm going to max this beam out right away and swap the beamer back into the deck because we'll be using her elsewhere. But for now, I'll finish up this section of the map. So I do like a 2D wall here, pretty close to the crystal. It doesn't need to be far away. You don't have anything coming in much aside from... Uh, goblins and archers over here that make it and uh we're gonna have a darkness trap go down to blind but first an inferno so i want the trigger range to peek out into this to this lane on the left here so that something actually triggers this trap three levels on that and then a darkness trap so the darkness is going to be nice it'll get triggered pretty early on into the wave and then uh, it'll blind everything 
the blind will cause enemies to just sort of run up to the wall and lose target to whatever they were aiming at and just stand here and then they die. So that's the idea with the darkness trap. That's why I like it. And we'll have some auras too. I'll do an ensnare and an electric aura. Electric first. Um, near the crystal, but between this pillar and the crystal. I'll drop the electric. A few levels and then an ensnare. So big coverage out in this lane. Um, a good bit over here as well. Over here and a bit on this side, but we get a lot better coverage from the traps over here. So it kind of compensates for the lack of coverage from the auras. All right, this side is almost done. Um, we've got a couple little holes here on these lanes. And what I generally do for these, you never get big enemies here. Uh, I almost never get anything that makes it to these walls, but just in case, I like plugging the holes up here with some apprentice walls. All right, back out of the deck with you. We need the beamer for one more thing. Okay, that's this portion of the map. This is where we're gonna hang out. That's done. So this section of the map is, uh, you know, I like a, a 2D wall here and I come out pretty far from the crystal. The reason I do that is because every once in a while you'll get a boosted kobold that'll run over, slam into this wall, and um, if it's too close to the crystal, your crystal will just get one shot. It'll blow up and you'll have no idea what happened, but that's not always gonna happen. So it's um, RNG whether or not you actually get that, but I'm gonna drop a beam on this wall. A 2D wall is enough. It'll take the damage. I'll drop a couple levels on that and a few on the beam. I don't go nuts on this wall. A 2D wall is fine. You could make it 3D if you wanted to, but uh, you'll see I have some other stuff going on over here. So I'm gonna drop a 2D wall pretty close to the crystal here because we'll occasionally get a goblin or an archer that'll just kind of mosey on up this will block them and because archers make it over here i don't know if this is completely necessary but i do drop a reflect just in, just in case they shoot i don't want the crystal to take any damage ideally all right we're gonna have some traps and auras going down here as well an inferno now i'm looking for a few things with this inferno placement i i wanted to cover this wall over here a little bit. I also wanted to cover this lane and out far enough in there to be triggered. So same principle here. It's going to get bigger range from dropping it onto the beam. Boom. Okay. We've got plenty of trigger on this side of the lane for the uh, enemies that make it to the wall to trigger it. And I'll do a few levels on that. Same deal with the darkness trap. The darkness will blind everything. You could go gas here. It, it would be better for stopping cobalts, but I like the darkness better because it's, it's not, it's elementally um, neutral. Nothing is immune to darkness, so that's why I like using that there. And then we'll do some auras here, too. I generally drop them about here, so a little closer to the wall, kind of between the wall and the uh, trap. So I'll do the electric first, three level ups, and then the ensnare, and that's going to do quite a bit of work in this lane. Very few enemies are actually going to make it through this. And we've also got some coverage from the Inferno as well. So that's why this wall really doesn't see much action. That's why I like that. So we've got one DU left. Now, what I like to do with this one DU is I just chuck it right here as a reflect because you do get some archers that make it over here before they get blinded and um, your crystal could take some damage in the very beginning if we don't have that reflect. And that completes the build. I've got some mana left. I'll dump that into the DST. So I'm going to bring my apprentice back into the deck for the fusion DSTs. I'm going to swap in my booster monk here with a striking gemstone. There we are. Speedy gemstone. My, my apologies. A speedy gemstone for this one. Don't need a striking. We won't need that range. And uh, I'll hang out over here a couple levels each into our DST stack. We've got some mana left over. I'll just hang on to it. You know what I'll do actually? Because um, I don't really want to have to come back out to the side of the map. I'm going to drop just a couple into the um, ensnare there. If the wall gets little, I'll have to come back out. But if not, I won't need to for the uh, whole run. So that's it. I'm going to swap over to the apprentice. Overdrive as you do. Swap over G up and boost. So the tower boost here buffs up the auras and traps over here as well. Everything's going to hit pretty hard and do lots of damage. We've got um, some armor on this wall. You'll see a bunch of enemies get pretty close enough to trigger the uh, traps and whatnot. So that archer did us a favor there, triggering the traps. Thank you, archer. And uh, now we just, we hang out. The copters go down, they touch the ensnare aura and pretty much come to a stop. So they drop their ogres over the pit and uh, they don't become an issue. 
the enemies, the nightmare enemies, they go down long before they become a problem because the four DSTs have a speedy. Now, having a speedy gemstone, if you can get away with having a speedy gemstone instead of a striking, you should. It's 101% bonus to the defense rate. You're doubling the output of those DSTs. It's pretty powerful. But, um, yeah, nothing really makes it too far to the walls. The walls don't take a lot of damage. The only wall that really takes a lot of heat for me sometimes is that wall way out there. If a boosted cobalt slams into that wall, it'll hit it pretty hard. And uh, that's really all that happens. That's the most exciting thing, really. Uh, these walls generally don't take any damage for me, but eh, I don't like going without them. Uh, the spiders that do drop in over here, the DST is going to take care of those. If you don't angle this DST out that way, you may get webbed. If you do, though, it'll be later into the wave. It really wouldn't matter, but this is what I like to do with the DST. So that is Tornado Valley. You can see that we're most of the way into the wave here. We've only got minor enemies left. Now, if you wanted to speed this up, you could. What you could do is go out onto this pillar here and drop your tower boost over here. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to boost the electric auras to burn down the minor enemies quicker. Your DSTs don't really need that boost anymore because the big enemies are dead. So that could speed the waves up considerably if you felt like going out and doing that. Otherwise, you can just kind of hang out here. And uh, kind of a theme with these builds is they combine some safety and some chill factor along with um, an element of speed to help run things a little quicker. And you know, if you have any other fusion defenses that you can mix in, you can make the build your own. You can change things. If you had fusion electric auras, you could probably change a few things. Maybe you could go without some of the walls if you had fusion um, and snares. There's a lot you could do here to make the build your own if you had more fusion defenses, but that is Tornado Valley. That's pretty much the gist of it here. Uh, we've, got, we've got some Dark Elves dancing on our towers here. The DSTs are going to do some job, do their job, and take them out eventually. But uh, yeah, that's Tornado Valley. I'll uh, skip to the end from here. It pretty much doesn't change. That's how it runs for me. Okay, not quite the end of the run, but I did just want to show this. The uh, wall over here did take some heat. It's got about a third of its health left, so it's not, you know, in danger of going down per se, but I might as well pop an upgrade on it while I'm over here. That's about as low as it gets from me. It does take some damage. Um, every once in a while, you'll get some archers that come over and take a shot before they go down to the auras, and every so often, what I've noticed is a, a kobold will just run over and slam into this wall and pop and do a good bit of damage. It would be enough to one-shot your crystal, which is why that gap is so big. All right, I'm going to get back over to the tower stack and G up and uh, cut to the end of the wave from here. Okay, coming up on the end here. Now, a couple things to note. If you wanted to change some stuff, you could consider this. Uh, this wall didn't take any damage from me, and uh, neither did this one. And I've got that one on the beam, too. It's got the armor. These walls are more for a just-in-case kind of blocking the enemies, and this just worked out when I was setting up builds and uh, trying to figure some things out that would work. Uh, this one, yeah, I upgraded it, and uh, it took this much damage. So, like, a 2DU wall is enough here. You could go a 3DU wall out here, and uh, you could just, instead of having that one on the beam, go 2DU for this one. It would be enough to cover the lane. It would work. Use the beamer, why not? And then you wouldn't have the armor on it. A 2DU would work. You could do a shorter beam if you wanted to. I just, I like a big beam over here because it's easier to put the traps on it. Up to you. But um, either way, that's Tornado Valley. Let's check out our helmet. Is that what I'm getting here? The helmet? Yeah. What have we got? 325, missing fort. Hmm. Could be useful, maybe. All four tower stats. 280, though, for the Ancient Greaves. But uh, yeah, that's our helmet for the Militia set. All right off to the lava mines for our gloves. Back in 1.0, this map was a brick wall for progressing through the campaign. Back then, towers were not good in 1.0. Massacre, you didn't really run towers at all, but uh, obviously not the case here in 1.2. So I'm gonna start with an electric lure here between this little mine cart and this little pile of rocks here, right where the light is shining on the ground there. An electric lure and then an ensnare. And I've got three levels on that electric lure. And then I like a wall kind of starting on this little round thing here 3du ideally would be nice if i can fit it there we go and i'm also going to drop a reflect wall here so this wall and this lane in general are kind of the farthest lane from our dst stack which will be over there so it's kind of on its own out here that's why i'm going in a little heavier on the uh, defenses here than i will on the other lane so i'm going to do a 4du buff beam 
three levels on that and I'll do a couple levels on the wall as well. I do also like to drop an inferno out here just barely on the beam to add some more damage. A few levels on that inferno. All right so on this lane it's uh, not going to take nearly as much heat because it's a lot closer to where our DSTs will be so an electric ore with three levels and an ensnare just kind of in the middle um, near the little this third um, section on the pipe here is where I generally drop that and then I'm going to do the inferno in front of it because the inferno has got a smaller range and a smaller trigger three levels on that as well and then I'll do a 2D wall just to cover this gap here just to stop anything that might make it past our damage that's really all that wall's for so I'm going to head up here and drop a 4D wall on a beam here as well the idea with this wall is uh, kobolds are going to come in and hit this wall and they're going to come in over here so that gap's bigger on that side than it is on this side this side you might get a, a copter ogre that makes it down onto the map every once in a while could happen and uh, this wall will tank them for you too and I'll drop a beam on this wall as well a 4D beam and uh, three levels on that I'll do one on the wall and then I'm gonna do a uh, an inferno not quite in the middle of the wall I just edge it on this side of the wall a little bit you'll get more enemies coming in from this side than through here so I like it on that side a little more three on that and then the same principle applying to the auras Three on the electric, one on the ensnare. More enemies build up over here, so I want more of the damage on this side of the lane. All right, so we've got 36 DU left, which is the perfect amount of DU for four DSTs and a four DU buff beam, which is exactly what we need over here. The first one I'm going to tuck in between the pipes and this railing and the left side of the aim. I want it to just cover that wall out there in that lane just to make sure anything that does make it to that wall, if the DSTs get a chance to shoot it, they will. They'll usually be preoccupied, but that way it's at least there if they get the chance to shoot it. So same deal here. And there are going to be some ogres coming out of that lane. These TSTs are going to make quick work of them. And we'll have a couple more DSTs going down. I'm going to line it up here against this pipe. One more DST. And uh, I'll aim this one kind of around here. I like it to cover this hole with the right side of the aim, just because a gin will come out of there. If you don't have it covered, a gin will come out and it might shoot you while you're standing over here it doesn't generally try to take anything but it'll probably shoot you and uh, maybe hit your towers as well and then one more going down i'll just put it behind this one and then um for the right side of the aim here i just wanted to cover the hole in the wall there that leads to the crystal that way anything coming around and coming out of there is going to get targeted every once in a while an ogre will come up that path and then once it gets there you'll have two dsts on it and uh we've got good coverage here so we've got a good bit of this path coming up covered this whole section covered here and we've got coverage on this part here as well this path so that's why i do things the way i do here with the aim on the dsts and we've got just enough for a 4du buff beam now because we're kind of tucked in we're going to hang out right here and because we're kind of tucked in we don't really have the ogres won't have a line of sight on us to throw things so we won't we won't need reflex over here four levels on the beam and then i'll do just two two one and one is going to be enough for the dsts for now i'm going to swap in the uh, hybrid booster there and get the rest of these guys out of the deck now you could go striking here but anytime i go i can go speedy i will 100 percent defense rate bonus is pretty big so i'm going to stick with the speedy here but you could go striking what it would do different the striking would shoot the copters over the uh pit and uh, drop all the ogres on that side. You wouldn't have ogres hitting the map at all with the striking, but then you would have less damage output for the other stuff. So I like a speedy better. Um, the ogres, the copters over here, they never make it for me, but um, that's the deal there. So I'm gonna just go ahead and overdrive the beginning like I normally do. Swap over to the monk and boost. And I like to just hang out on the little railing here. And uh, that way I can keep an eye on things and watch but the waves run pretty smooth. The uh, DSTs with the speedy on them, they kill the Jin and the Sharkin and stuff and the copters before they become an issue. You do get copters that make it pretty far over here and drop some ogres, but we've got a wall over there. It's gonna tank the damage that they do. If you wanted to contribute anywhere, shooting some shots into the uh, copter lane 
would be a good idea, not a bad idea, to uh, just take them out before they drop full health ogres. That way, you know, they just they don't get a chance to do as much to your walls or whatnot as, uh, as they could. But you'll see that the, uh, the ogres, they do land some of them. They just they die pretty quick, so they don't really become an issue. We've got kobolds on the east side of the map coming in, hitting that wall, and uh, stopping them from popping our crystals. So that's, that's the idea here for the lava mines. I run a modified version of this build when I speed run this map. I use fusion electric auras and fusion infernos, and uh, I go without one of the walls down here and that reflect over there, and uh, I, I drop an explosive trap up on the uh, northeast part of the map where those ma where those enemies tend to accumulate just to speed things along. But this this build works with um, just fusion DSTs, and we're, we're about halfway through. It is a bit of a long run, over a thousand enemies, and uh, you'll see that these ogres, they just, they can't see you, which is why they don't end up throwing kobolds and stuff, so we don't need to reflect over here. I used to run a reflect over here. I stopped running that when I uh, dropped the DSTs down to here. I used to put them up on the pipe, So, but this works better. So that is the lava mines. That's pretty much how the run goes. I'll cut to the end from here unless something interesting happens. Not quite the end of the run, but I did want to show the damage at the end of the wave to this wall. It took a total of 79.88k damage. So uh, yeah, it's still pretty healthy. Uh, sometimes it'll take more, sometimes it'll take less. I found though that it wasn't really worth having a reflect up here for the kobolds and stuff that get thrown from the dropped ogres. It, it just doesn't take much damage, but while I'm here, I'll drop a level on it. Why not? And um, repair up and whatnot while I'm here. But uh, yeah, that's that's the worst that tends to happen to this wall for me. Sometimes it's a little more, sometimes it's a little less damage. This wall, for this round, didn't take any damage at all, but that's deceptive. It took a little, but uh, sometimes it can take a lot. So I do like having that wall there on a beam for this build without fusion defenses. All right, gonna get going for the next wave and I'll see you at the end. Okay, coming up on the end here. So I think the most important thing for making this build run smoothly is just remembering to keep your boost up. It sounds simple enough, but um, you're basically doubling the damage of your DSTs when you boost them. So letting that drop for too long, especially when the copters are coming in, can get kind of sketchy. So as long as your boost is up and the speedies on your DSTs, you're good to go. But the last ogre going down here. So at the end of wave 24, you get this weird period where you're waiting for an ogre to spawn in. Usually I take that opportunity to come up here, repair this wall or upgrade it. And then I had to upgrade the ensnare on that lane as well. But uh, yeah, this is about how much this damage on the wall here is about how much it takes per wave for me. And uh, total taken 327. So yeah, this wall takes some heat, which is why I like it. I like it to be a 4D wall on a buff beam. But uh, this wall over here, it got beat on a bit at the end of wave 24, and that's pretty much it. So that's that's the gist of this build. My fastest time with this build, I think, was 9 minutes, 13 seconds when I used Fusion Electric Auras and Infernos. But let's check out the loot. So it looks like I got a Primitive Helmet here, too. That looks like it might be decent. 289 all four towers. That's, eh, not great. Uh, our gloves here missing a range roll 269 not great either but that is our gloves acquired let's head to the ramparts for the boots this was one of my favorite maps in dd1 i used to come here all the time bowling ball towers used to be really good here uh, not so much in dda in dda the only reason to come here really was to farm a genie and um you didn't use bowling ball towers, that's for sure. So I'm gonna start with some explosive traps near the spawn here. These explosive traps are gonna rack up a ton of kills because they're gonna constantly be triggered. And an inferno right behind it, two levels each. And that's what I'm gonna do on each of the spawn doors. We're essentially gonna spawn camp this. It ends up being pretty safe and pretty quick. You could go gas instead of the explosives if you found your lanes were leaking, but for me with these stats, it was never a problem. So I, I like the explosives better because it just runs quicker, but gas would be a little safer if you wanted to go that route. Just one on each door with two levels each. Okay, last door here. And I'm, I'm not coming as close as I can because then you waste some of the trigger range. It ends up not really making sense to do that in my opinion. So I come back a little bit further and uh, do the inferno and explosive right there like that now we don't need gas on each lane because the gin are going to get roasted by some dst so over here i'm going to drop a 4d buff beam 
three levels on that. And then I'm going to have some auras going down here. So I'm going to tuck in on this uh, little ridge here, right in the middle of it, more or less. Maybe over here is better. An electric aura, three level ups, and an ensnare. So that's going to cover this whole bend around here. And it'll cover this lane, the straightaway up here, and a bit of this corner. So it's going to have plenty of coverage on both of those lanes. And then we're going to do something pretty similar over here. Same sort of principle here. I'm going to do a um, an ensnare, kind of right into this corner here. An ensnare and an electric or the electric first, One, two, three, and then an ensnare. And that's going to cover a good bit of this lane. Some coverage here already, but we're going to put that on a beam as well. And it's going to cover a good bit more of that lane. And then it's going to cover this lane as well. A good bit of this lane here. So up on the roof is where we're going to stash our tower stack. Going to start off with a couple of DSTs inside, just barely inside, up on the roof, but just barely inside the uh, ensnare here. That way, when we drop a beam later, it'll hit the R stack. And I'm just going to barely cover. I want that copper lane uh, indicator to turn yellow on the left of it there a little bit for these two DSTs. That's the idea here. And I find the further up on the house, the better, because uh, Dark Elves will try to get up here, but they won't really get much done. They'll make it up top, but uh, usually they just get shot right away. All right, so those two are aiming at that copter lane on, I guess that's the north side of the map. And for this next DST, I'm going to just barely cover. You'll see the, that part of the uh, ramparts turn yellow. I just want a little bit of that yellow, just a tiny bit, and these two will be aimed just like that. Just barely a little bit of yellow there. And then these two are aimed a little bit differently. So I'm gonna have this one go down here and I'm gonna have the right side of the aim just barely light up that big around section of the castle there, just barely onto that so that it targets the spawn door. I'm more or less aiming it at the spawn door down there, the right side of the aim. And then for this one, I'll have this one cover the crystal actually this far crystal you get a bunch of spiders over there and uh, i don't want to have to kill them myself so this this dst is going to get the job done for me just just barely just barely covering it that'll work and then would you look at that we've got four du left for a buff beam which is exactly what we need right here a four du beam so it'll be on the auras and it'll buff all of our towers as well and i'll hit that with some levels Four level ups is good, and then the rest of this evenly. Two levels each into our tower stack. All right, I'm gonna boot everyone out of the deck aside from the apprentice with the fusion DSTs, and of course my speedy booster monk with his fancy new Santa hat. And that's it, that's all we'll need. So just like everything else here, I uh, I do like the overdrive and then swap over to my monk and boost. And I'm going to stand on this DST because I want these four to have the speedy. I stand on this one. There's our friends, the Dark Elves. They don't really get much done. They do make it up here. A plus forever, but they get taken out before they become uh, productive. So I stand on this DST to give these four the speedy. And I maintain my tower boost to uh, buff the DSTs as well as this electric aura. So we've got a flyer lane coming in here. That'll hit the Auras before it becomes an issue. This flyer lane covered by the DSTs, this flyer lane also. So the copters generally don't make it for me. Um, they always get shot down. You can see it over there well before they come near the map. Every once in a while you get an orc that gets kind of close, but um, the DST ends up prioritizing them because once they get close, they become high priority targets. So um, that's the gist of this run. One thing that does change in terms of when I'm looking at the map, what you'll see sometimes is enemies will make it up this lane a little bit and die, but sometimes the ogres will make it up this lane a good bit. Um, for me, they always die around that bend. But if you're concerned about an ogre making it all the way up, there's two options here. You could cut the 4DU beam over there and drop a 4DU wall somewhere in that lane or Toward the end of the wave, when those ogres are coming out and all of the other enemies, the uh, nightmare enemies, are down, what you could do instead, shift over to this DST. And what that'll do 
is it'll give the speedy boost to these two DSTs here, which are both covering that path. Two DSTs have always been plenty for me to take out any ogres that are coming, even when I get a double ogre spawn on that lane, giving these two DSTs that boost. There's one right there. They just don't make it that far. They make it out of the aura sometimes, but they just don't make it anywhere near the crystal to become a threat. So that's the gist of this run. Uh, what I do generally do, I don't go nuts collecting and upgrading for this, but this ensnare aura tends to get pretty low if I don't give it some love. And of course, explosive traps have um, charges and not, not a long duration. They, the charges burn pretty quick. So that one over there and uh, the one down here get pretty low. So I'll just chuck a level or two on them. And then uh, I don't really prioritize upgrading or leveling anything else beyond that. So I'm just going to G it up from here, run the next two waves the exact same way. And unless anything crazy happens, I'll see you at the end of the run. Looks like a copter ogre made it onto the map, but he's got nowhere to go. He's so confused. Yeah, no walls. So they, uh, they kind of don't have a target. Pretty rare that one makes it to the map for me, but uh, that's the worst that happens when they do. All right, to the end of the wave. All right, coming up on the end here, I'm just gonna shift over to this side of the tower stack. You're safe to do that. Once you get to the last, you know, three, 400 enemies there, that ogre went down pretty quick, the one at the end there. So I'm just waiting for this siren to leave at this point. And uh, yeah, that'll wrap it up. So, you know, if you do have concerns about ogres coming up the side of the map, once you get through the uh, initial burst where the copters are coming in and the, the gin and the shark and stuff, just hang out on this DST. And then you'll have these two targeting that bend around there. But I wanted to show this. So just to show that these explosive traps really do put in a lot of work. Here are the uh, the uh, number of enemies hit and killed. 763 hit, 118 killed compared to the Inferno. 563 hit, 118 or 37 killed. So that's a, a good bit less. The, uh, the explosive traps do put in quite a bit of work here compared to the Infernos, which is why I like them. You could run gas, but the explosives, if you have a place to put them where they'll constantly get triggered, they'll do big, big damage. But usually the star of the show is the electric ores these days anyway. So, you know, it's all kind of incidental compared to them. But that is the ramparts there. That's the run. So let's just jump over and check out the chest here. We've got some boots, 296, missing a fort roll. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. And uh, we do get one more piece here. Let's see if I can get this junk out of the way. It is an ancient helmet, I believe. Yeah, 287, just fort and power. So that that is our pair of militia boots off to the promenade for our chest. Once again, off to the promenade, this time for militia. So I did share a build for the promenade in my guard farming video. This will be a variation of that build that runs a little faster and I think it's better. But you do have to watch out for a couple things that weren't an issue in the other build. But uh, I think I like this better. So I'm going to start with a 60U buff beam here, stretched across to this banister as close as I can get to the crystal here, stretched over to the banister. And uh, that is the only buff beam in this build. So I'll swap the apprentice back in. And I'm going to drop a flame burst up here on top of the railing. It's going to have good vision of a few different lanes and it'll do a lot of damage because the flame burst does splash damage. So it'll hit a lot of a lot of enemies for a lot of damage. It'll actually do better than the Inferno, even though the Inferno will be boosted by a striking. So right here, I cut up this corner of the lane and then it's got vision on all this. It's going to do a bunch of damage. So some DSTs going down here next. I'll aim the first two at that tall bush with the right side of the aim, and uh, that'll take care of a copter lane as well as cover two spawn doors, so that's good. And then I'm going to have three more going down on this side of the beam here, and these are going to aim the right side at that torch between the two pillars right there, same as before, but I'm going to do three over there instead of two to uh, have more damage covering the middle of the map. And then we'll do two more after this. And uh, they'll be aimed at, just wanna make sure that's on the beam. And it is these two DSTs going down next, will be aimed uh, the right side at this spawn door here, because nothing comes out over here. 
But you do get some spiders back there. I noticed that the spiders at the end of the wave would kind of hold it up a little bit and slow things down. So these two DSTs aimed this way will cover that and we won't have to wait for those spiders to die to the aura stack, which will go right here. I kind of like it between these two DSTs, but out a little bit and ensnare electric and strength drain as well as an inferno. And we're gonna boost these with a striking gem four levels on the Inferno and the Electric Aura. I'm gonna do three on the Flame Burst for now and then max out the beam. So while I've got the Huntress out, I'll drop some gas on these lanes here. And since I'm up here, I'm gonna do some walls. Now, this wall can be a 4DU wall and still do the same job as before, distract the Ogre and uh, prevent damage to the Crystal. A 4D wall there works just fine. And this wall here takes very little, if any, damage. For me, it doesn't take damage, but it might take a bit uh, for you, depending on how things go with boosting. So it's the main challenge for this is going to be keeping your Inferno and Aura stack boosted. And you can check that house. You'll see it later. But that 2D wall is plenty. It's tempting to put a 3D wall on this beam and stretch it across but it just for me it takes so little damage and then this 2du wall here it uh, it generally doesn't take damage for me unless i get bopped off of the tower stack and the uh boost gets removed from the auras that can happen you'll see what i'm talking about maybe it'll happen during this run and i'll have a 3du wall here and i'll do a uh a gas and a darkness trap here as well triggered from this lane covering this one nothing really makes it through here so i just cut the wall i haven't had a problem cutting the wall there so we've got a few to you left i'm going to use that few to you left on reflect walls one here is good and then one for the flame burst and then one more for this wall just in case so here's the thing with this version of the build we had a bouncer before to hang out on, and we were, we were away from the tower stack. So the Dark Elves would come over to us and not the tower stack. So the challenge here is going to be that the tower stack is what we'll be hanging out on top of. I'm going to do two on each of these, and then one on these, just spreading it across the uh, DSTs. I'll hang on to some of this. So I'm going to swap the rest of the heroes out of the deck here. And overdrive. Swap to the Monk, G it up drop my tower boost and now i've got the striking on my aura stack you can see the lines on that building there and the inferno is huge so i know that's boosted now these dark elves are going to come over and um things get weird with these dark elves sometimes so that's what i look out for i keep an eye on these dark elves see like that i don't know if that's supposed to happen or not the dsts took some cleave damage from a swing that the dark elf took I don't know if that's supposed to happen or not, but it does happen um, every once in a while that that will happen. So I'm just going to periodically check and make sure. Yep, my auras are still boosted, so is the Inferno, and uh, that's that. Oh, I forgot to upgrade the Strength Drain. Well, I'll just repair everything for now. I'll, I'll do a couple levels on the Strength Drain. Should have did a, a level or two on that. But uh, yeah, the, the DSTs, they don't take much damage, but... I don't know if that's supposed to happen or not, but that's kind of a byproduct of, of, from hanging out on top of the DST stack. That's generally the worst of it. So uh, this wall will take some damage down there, but um, these generally won't unless you get like launched off the tower stack, which occasionally um, you'll get bopped off. And if you, if you do get launched off the tower stack, you end up like over here or something, you'll lose your boost. Just try to get back as quick as you can and reset the boost on the striking by standing here for a little bit and then jump up. Then and you can just check and make sure. See my ensnares off now? I just wanna make sure everything actually gets, whoops, the, um, the boost there. And now I know everything is buffed by the striking. So that's kind of the worst that can happen, but otherwise it runs a lot quicker. So I kind of like it better. I'm gonna, re I'm gonna collect a little bit of mana here and uh, just add a couple levels to this wall. Get the easy mana to collect. And I'm gonna hop back up and drop a couple levels on my strength drain. You should do a level or two on the strength drain 
If you do three with the Fortify that I have on my Aura Monk, I generally don't need to repair it mid-wave. But uh, that's an indicator that the wave is running quicker. Let's do a quick comparison, though, just so I can show you the difference between the uh, Inferno. 50 million damage, 50.25 million damage on the Inferno. Look at the Flame Burst here. 68. It's doing better. It's hitting more enemies and it's doing more splash damage. It generally does outperform the Inferno. So I'll repair up and uh, swap over to my Apprentice to boost. Back to the Monk. Power boost. Set the striking and back onto the tower stack. Rinse and repeat from here. That's generally how it goes. So I'll see you at the end of the run. Okay, coming up on the end here at Promenade, waves 24 and 25 were actually a lot smoother with the Dark Elves in the beginning. I guess once I had some upgrades into the uh, DSTs and some of the other stuff, it made, uh, it made a difference. So one thing that's interesting about this wall is um, even though it didn't take any damage, I, I really like this wall here because a lot of the Dark Elves get to it and it messes them up, it messes their pathing up. Sometimes they stay on this wall and die and then they'll have to jump over it if they do want to come after me which gives my DSTs more time to target them and me more time to shoot them. So these walls more than um, anything, especially this wall too, no damage, but it trips up the Dark Elves quite a bit. So that's helpful. Um, I didn't have to repair or upgrade this wall at all. It didn't take much. A couple of shots from an, from an ogre though. Um, this one, I uh, left it alone after wave 23 and um, it took about half damage between 24 and 25. So it held up pretty good. It could use another upgrade or two maybe, but let's check out the loot here. The guard helmet, 328, all four tower stats, that's pretty good. But we're really after the militia chest here, so let's see how that is. Uh, just power and range, 313. Not great, but that's the chest. So one thing I did want to just double check real quick. I just want to see how this flame burst did. All right, 199 million damage. Let's check the inferno. 100 million, wow, that's, that's almost double. So uh, yeah, you definitely want the flame burst here. It's anytime you can use them. You should, but that's the chest, and that is, oh, 1236, not too bad. That's our complete set. This build runs faster. I think it's better than the other one I shared for the guard video, but that'll do it for our full set of Militia. Let me know if you uh, try the builds out and how they go for you. I'm looking forward to farming up some more Militia for some fusion and flame bursts. I think they can be really handy and nice to have, but that'll do it for this one. Thanks so much for watching.